folks. This is Jeff and this week with JTT. And this is the Monday Night Raw before Bash at Berlin. So, spoiler, spoiler warnings ahead. So, I'll probably go into um, reacting to the matches with my feelings about it. And see how it goes. I think this Raw before Bash at Berlin should be pretty good. So, let us begin. Raw just paid a great tribute to um, the Sid Udi, formerly known as um, Sid Vicious. Psycho Sid, Sid Justice, passed away um, not too long ago. Once again, um, Sid Udi, rest in peace. The Monday Night Raw before Bash at Berlin, and some of the highlights are going to be Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman, the Battle of the Behemoths. Ooh, we it's like Godzilla, like Godzilla and King Kong colliding. Then you get Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable. Oh, so far, so good. It's going to be really interesting. So, let's kick this up a notch. It's amazing how a few weeks can change things so drastically. Judgment Day, not a prize of Dominic Mysterio. Dom Dom, the sneaky one. But, his new sweetheart is Liv Morgan, women's champion. New tag team champions are Finn Balor, J.D. McDonough, and of course, Carlito. So, my math is right. Yeah. That equals to Judgment Day. Let's see what goes on. Last week on Raw, it was Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley going to handle Dominic Mysterio for his betrayal to Rhea Ripley for her losing the belt to Liv Morgan. Until the rest of Judgment Day jumped in, Dogpile Priest, and Liv Morgan took out Rhea Ripley. So supposedly, Bash at Berlin, supposedly be if I'm correct, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest versus Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. But what are the chances some of the members of the Judgment Day would be there? I say, very good. Apparently, Carlito and Dominic ran their mouths way too much because Latino World Order is here to shut them up. Now that is cool. Joaquin Wild, Cruz Del Toro, Dragon Lee, and Rey Mysterio comprise of the Latino World Order. Things this got interesting. And as one man once said, Business is about to pick up. How wild is that? Dominic's ready to talk smack about his father, then Liv Morgan got to run her mouth. Ray pretty much ready to put um, Dominic in his place and bit of a stare down. And da Ray dared Dominic to, to throw hands against him. And JD Medina was still left to try to raise hands. I wanted to have Ray smack him down. We had a nice fight. Judgment Day got cleared out with the LWO. Standing tall. Judgment Day. Oh, yeah. Like I said, Is he business just picked up. Twins just screwed also, over. Also, that one coming. Damian Eight Priest. Eight-man tag. Especially LWO. Let's yeah. the world those order. Those two came in. Versus. And beat judgment the brakes oh, off of Judgment Day. Oh, yeah. Those two alone. Which tells the me of Liv Morgan, those two, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley, are yeah. the muscle and the powerhouses of Judgment Day. Their so-called reborn version of Judgment Day has a problem. But worse off, mixed tag team. On Bash of Berlin, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley versus Dirty Dumb Mysterio and Liv Morgan. Yeah. Like I said, unless the rest of Judgment Day is going to be there, I don't like Dirty Dumb's and Liv Morgan's chances. What do you say? Tonight on Raw would be a number one contenders match for the Intercontinental Belt, currently held by Brian Breaker. It would be made of that Jey Uso, Kofi Kingston, Multiple tag team champion, and of course, carrying cross. It's going, if I'm correct, it's going to be a three way battle for a number one contendership and a no, I think it's a triple threat qualifying match. So it's going to be good, real good. You thought one triple threat match was enough for you? No, we're all going to have a second, yes, right, a second triple threat match. For the Intercontinental Championship um, Tournament. First will be Xavier Woods versus The Miz versus Pete Dunne. It's going to be fast. It's going to be hard hitting. And it's going to be downright brutal. Especially with Mr. Pete Dunne in the house. Look out. Now, The Miz got a chance to win a title, but Bronx Reed came to make a threat to him. He claimed he's going to maim Braun Strowman. Saying Braun Strowman, who's about six foot eight, close to four hundred pounds, very big, muscular guy, insanely powerful. Braun Strowman's a big, powerful dude, got some speed. 
but so does Braun Strowman. Bronson, be careful what you wish for. That's one monster you don't want coming after you. Don't know what else to tell you, but hey. The tag team of Kyrie Sane, known as Devil's Girl, Kyrie Sane and EO Sky versus Pure Fusion Collective, which has Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, with Sonya Deville as the leader, if I'm correct. Yeah, those three ladies. Pure Fusion Collective, yeah, you don't want to don't smoke from them. And this tag team is going to be just ridiculous. Can't wait to check it out. Look like Pure Fusion Collective have been busy wreaking havoc across the women's division in WWE on Raw. Wow. Wow. So, like I said, the women in the women's locker room on Raw, you're on notice. So, as saying goes, if you really really smart, I say you watch it back. Simple as that, especially when Pure Fusion Collective is around. Selena Vega out of nowhere attacking Sonya Deville provided a distraction, which gave damage control to win. Kyrie saying pin Zoe Stark. Oh my goodness, Pure Fusion Collective is not gonna be happy. I smell vengeance and payback down the line. Hey, Chad. Uh, Mr. Gable? Yeah, you, Shorty G. You sure you want to smoke with, um, Bo Dallas or his alter ego, um, Uncle Howdy? You sure you want to smoke with him and the rest of, um, of his clan? You sure you want that? And mind you, you got, you know, the Kree Brothers and, um, Miss Ivy, what they call it? Ivy Niles, the little pit bull girl? Yeah. I don't like you guys' odds. I don't. But keep messing around with guys like that. It's no saying goes like this. Keep messing around, you'll find out. He about to find it in a big way. Looks like Drew McIntyre's in the house. And for what I see, he still has CM Punk's keepsake on his wrist. Oh yeah, it's gotten so so personal. It is so far. From being over between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. But at Bash of Berlin. Strap match. It's going to be bad. It's going to be brutal. And. <sighs> those who. Who flinch and cringe easily. Don't watch this match. These strap matches can get pretty. Messy. Drew McIntyre was in the ring. Cutting up promo. Talking trash. How a simple little. You know. Trinket like the wrist bracelet. That belonged to CM Punk. Saying how much pain is going He's going for trying to get it back. Talking smack. How he's going to take out CM Punk. Oh, they had CM Punk came behind and whipped his back with the same strap he's going to use on him at Bash of Berlin. And boy, it looks like it stings. That guy out of control really quick. Drew McIntyre had temporary control with that Glasgow kiss, but CM Punk retained control. Used his strap to beat the brakes off him. He was beating. Drew McIntyre like he owes him money. Now, security, the good news, security came, broke it up. Drew McIntyre got out of the way after he got, ooh, got popped with that leather strap. Flesh on leather, that hurts. And then CM Punk was so enraged when that happened, he took out his aggression on the guards, which is going to cost him some money in terms of fines. And as um, one man already said, I hope these guys got has it paid because CM Punk was pretty rough with them. Seriously, very rough. Bronson Reed put Seth freaking Rollins on the shelf. And unfortunately, Bronson Reed got the power and the muscle and the ability to do it. He did it. How long is Seth Rollins going to be out? You guess as good as mine. His next target, however, is going to be a lot bigger, stronger, and way more dangerous. Monster among men. Braun Strowman. And a triple threat match. For the Intercontinental Championship Tournament starts with many of it Jey Uso. Yeeting away. Yeet. You did a spot for um for college football for Georgia Tech. I forgot who Georgia Tech uh, went up against, but Georgia Tech won. Sheamus was definitely a Georgia Tech fan. And Pat McAfee looked like he partied a little bit too much. But it's great to see Sheamus up and going in good spirits and all that. 
Always great to see Sheamus is in good health. All right, fella. Next place for the triple threat tournament for the be the number one contender for the Intercontinental Belt is Karrion Cross. I'm sorry, the interest business from NXT is way way better. And um, don't mind me. Don't like I said, I don't mind. Like I said, Scarlett being a brunette, I have zero problem with that. I'm here for that all day. But still, the interest business from NXT, you should have kept it. It was pretty awesome. It also is part of Final Testament. Interesting. But still, Karrion Cross, I think he deserves better. And this is the guy who's not into heels. I'm not going to lie. I'm way more into faces than heels. The only exception I make is like me for Roman Reigns and all that. But still, I want to see Karrion Cross be successful. But let's see how this goes. The final entry for the triple threat match to be part of the Intercontinental um, Tournament is one part of the New Day, Kofi Kingston. Multiple tag team champion. I think one time world champion. I think multiple time intercontinental. I think U.S. champion. I think U.S. champion. I think you got U.S. I'll check later. Talk to you later. People may say I'm wrong or jinxing, but you said some cracks in the New Day Foundation. Or I had to go down the dark road. Do you sense that possible breakup of the New Day? I say it would be Xavier Woods who steps out. I say the greatest irony is that hopefully Orlando Jones steps in. But I say it would be Xavier Woods who would be the one to step away from New Day. Sad. It would be sad. First, it would be Judgment Day, which I won't be too surprised. I can't see that one coming. But New Day, that would be pretty sad indeed. That's right. Eat it up. Because main event, Jay Uso... Made it. One down, one more to go for him. And he would have to enter Continental Championship. But till then, yeet. The Reign General is currently in Europe getting ready for his match against Randy Orton at Bash of Berlin. And so far, he's pretty much saying like he's ready and all that stuff. But trust me when I tell you, Randy is so ready to go to war against Gunta. The Reign General versus the Viper, the Apex Predator. Yeah, trust me, you think that the last match of these two fought was tough? Yeah, I think they're going to kick it up a few notches at Berlin. I promise you. The Apex Predator, the Viper, Randy Orton, makes an appearance. Gee, I wonder what you have to say when it comes to Bash at Berlin against Gunther, the current world champion. Randy Orton gave a very impassioned promo about... Events leading to Bash of Berlin against Gunther. He realized he wants to go to to um to Europe. Gunther's the legend. Gunther's the hero. And Randy always be looked upon as the most vile villain in the world. But that haven't stopped Randy before. No. He say he fish and shed demons, and his demons is way more powerful than Gunther. So I'm looking forward to seeing Randy Orton beating the brakes off of Gunther. And coming home with the world title at Bash of Berlin. But meanwhile, Pete Dunne is getting ready for the Intercontinental Tournament. Pete Dunne is one of the many competitors who's going to compete in this tournament. And the Battle of the Behemoths are going to take place. Braun Strowman, the monster among monsters, and Thick Boy, Bronson Reed. Both very big, powerful men. As Gorilla Monsoon once says, the immortal, way rest in peace, Gorilla Monsoon once says, the immovable object versus the irresistible force. Here we go. Braun Strowman's in the ring already, ready to go to battle. Bronson Reed approaches the ring. The battle of the monsters is about to begin. Hopefully the ring is reinforced, because it's going to be crazy. Did Bronson Reed... Flew through the ropes like a cruiserweight? What is going on? Even Braun Strowman said, like, what? Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed took the fight outside to the parking lot. Um, security got got that behind kicked. In fact, these guys used the humans in the lobby. Oh, they actually used human beings as weapons. 
Yeah, they take one human being, try to whip it against the other. It's crazy. They took it to their back parking lot. And they kind of messed up two cars, which means someone's car insurance just went up. Or the rental fee, yeah, it's going to cost them money. Yeah. Two cars got messed up. It's going to cost somebody some money. Man, that's tough. I believe Bronson Reed just crushed the monster among monsters on top of a car? And that car got pretty messed up. That's a crazy end of the Battle of the Beast. Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed. Such a crazy finish. The Miz walks up to the rocks to the ring to be part of the three man triple threat match of this intercontinental intercontinental championship tournament. He's one of three people. He's one. Pete does the other one. Who will be the other one? Oh yeah, Xavier Woods. This should be interesting. But like I said, first one in the ring, the Miz. Next one to the ring. The Bruiserweight, Peter Dunn. Well, it's going to be called Pete Dunn, but it doesn't matter what you call him. They just don't call him weak or pathetic. The guy is dangerous, extremely dangerous. So the other two of the competitors, be warned. Last but not least, Xavier Woods of New Day. This guy is champion of multiple titles in terms of tag team. But question is, though... Will he stay with New Day? Or will he soon depart? I don't know. I I see cracks between Xavier Woods and Kobe Kingston. Things haven't been the same since um, Big E's left the group due to injury. So let's see what happens next. Looks like the Miz is in control, is in control for now. The Bruiserweight Pete Dunne advances for the Intercontinental Tournament. Whew! Mm. Although that um, Pete Dunne has won, and and all, Braun Breaker is not impressed. He's not impressed with those who won. Now Pete Dunne won against um, The Miz and Xavier Woods. And unlike the earlier match, you got Karrion Cross, Kofi Kingston. And um, Jay Uso. But Bar Breaker, well, here's the thing though there's only two guys so far in this fight who won. Who got qualified. There's two more guys. So if I was Braun Breaker, yeah, he's a tough dog. But there's two more. Question is who was ever two of the guys who got to come up to be the winner? So it's going to be good. I promise you that. So all in all, you got Jay Uso, first qualified for four way dance to compete for the Intercontinental Belt, followed by, of course, Pete Dunn. Now, Braun Breaker is not all that impressed, but guess what? You still got two of the men who got to enter there. The first two may not impress you, but question who be the other two? That's a big question. And I was you, Braun Breaker, don't get overconfident. You're big and bad tough I, on a one-on-one -on -one match, but you got four other guys. You got fight. Psh, good luck. You must be in a battle royal. Coming up soon, Jack Gable versus Uncle Howdy. He thinks he's going to just go and fight um, Bo Dallas. Thinking like, well, Bo Dallas had a match. He's just an ordinary man. I don't know. Bo Dallas been for some very interesting changes. And Chad Gable's going to find out pretty quickly how this Bo Dallas is going to be different from the Bo Dallas we knew from the past. Yeah, the Terror Twins, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Yeah, they're coming for blood. But not just for Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. The rest of the Judgment Day. Carlito and Finn Balor. If I'm a betting man... Of all people you're going to put a target on first, it was tough with Dom, then Liv, then Finn, JD McDonough, and Garlicto to save the best for last for you. So you might take that apple and show us a place you don't want it. i give you a clue. It won't be down your throat. Just saying. Corey Graves and Michael Cole give a very touching, a very heartwarming um, tribute to um, 
to Sid UD, formerly known as Psycho Sid, Sid Vicious, how they, you know, were influenced by him in the wrestling business. Once again, Sid Vicious, Sid UD, rest in peace. If I'm saying this correctly, though, for next Monday Night Raw, which would be the Monday after Bash at Berlin, it'd be Sheamus versus Big Bronson V versus Ludwig Kaiser. If I'm a betting man, it's going to be mainly between Sheamus and Big Bronson Reed. Nothing against Ludwig Kaiser, but <sighs> Sheamus and Big Bronson Reed, yeah. Ludwig Kaiser would be in the way, and he'd be dealt with, just saying. And later on that same night, after the first round of the Intercontinental First Contenders Tournament, it's going to be Ily- Ilya Dragunov, Dragon Lee, and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Oh, this is going to be a high-flying match. Let me see. It was by Sheer Chicanery and Dirty Tricks. I give it a dumb, but in terms of sheer ability and all that stuff, I'm going to leave it between Dragunov and Dragon Lee. So, the reason why I say Dominic Mysterio might get it, because one, he's a sneaky little something-something, and don't be surprised if some member of Judgment Day get involved. That'd be the only way Dominic would get that, unless... Judgment Day is involved, but I think it's going to be between Dragunov and Dragon Lee. Just saying. And apparently next week, after Bash of Berlin, Selena Vega, who makes an incredible return, goes against Shayna Baszler. Often, often, I admire that woman's guts and fire, but we talk about Shayna Baszler, the arm collector. She's a brutal, brutal creature. So Selena Vega, exercise extreme caution. I mean, exercise extreme caution. Shady Baszler is nothing to mess with. Seriously. And it's finally going to happen. Chad Gamer versus Uncle Howdy. But I think the rest of America made is going to be nearby. I have a gut feeling something's going to happen. It's going to be a knockdown, drag him out war between America made and Uncle Howdy's family. Here we go. A well, guy supposed to be so sure of himself is going to face Uncle Howdy. Why you look worried? Why you look concerned? Do you by chance regret your decision to face Uncle Howdy, maybe? And now enter Uncle Howdy and the rest of the sick Wyatt family. The match is going crazy. Um, Tag came had a little bit of advantage until Uncle Howdy said, you know what, I had enough. And he started beating the brakes off of him. The ref got knocked out. Three brothers got involved. I've not got involved. But um, when Uncle Howdy started laughing, despite how bad he looks, it's never good. Why? Why this one out? That's all you need to know. And after the Wyatt sick family that just took down the rest of America made, and a sister Abigail later, Uncle Howdy is victorious. And right now, he's looking towards to the sky, most likely looking towards his brother, Bray. Smiling, saying like, way to go, little bro, way to go. That was the Raw before Bash at Berlin. Next would be the SmackDown before Bash at Berlin. See you soon, folks. See you on SmackDown. Peace.